if you look at the overview of uh, BTK treatment, and you know, I think what's really important to note here today is that I think we've all moved on past BTK. We're actually talking about below the ankle a lot uh, here today, and, and Arthur showed a great demonstration of the anatomy there. So, so basically, you've got a variety of things. You've got angioplasty. Uh, DCB hasn't worked out. BVS may or may not work out. You've got coronary DES that works. You've got bare metal stents that haven't been too promising, and you've got atherectomy. Uh, as well as an assortment of wires and support catheters. So this isn't an exhaustive uh, list, but basically support catheters 014, 018 are most useful to me. Every once in a while you can pop across a larger vessel with an 035 system, but I think most of us are using a lot of coronary CTO equipment and, uh, and 018 uh, equipment because the wires have simply gotten so much better. In terms of access, uh, you want to ha have some sheaths that are long that can get you either from contralateral or anagrade. Uh, these can come anywhere, four French, five French, six French, depending on what kind of equipment you think you're going to need. And then from the bottom, a lot of people will just simply get three French access just to gain wire access across the lesion. But some people work through these, uh, these tibial sheaths as well. And so that's always an option depending on the size of vessel. Uh, you want to have a good assortment of micropuncture equipment. And, and I'm obviously biased to the hockey stick probe. I think uh, having good ultrasound is, is of paramount importance in these cases. In terms of atherectomy, you know, some devices have more data than others. I think this is a personal preference and skill set, whatever you feel comfortable with, whether it's directional, laser, orbital, or uh, rotational. And, uh, and I think it's case specific. Obviously, uh, I don't think one size fits all uh, in these sorts of, of uh, lesions and in this sort of disease. So I'll just show a quick example. 74-year-old guy with some tissue breakdown, the usual uh, uh, diseases. And then, you know, I guess these days you always have to mention whether they're vaccinated or not against COVID uh, because that <laughs> tends to play a role sometimes in terms of thrombotic disease is referred by podiatry. So we'll uh, show the physical exam. No, no uh, surprises there on physical exam. And then this will be a little bit slow, but essentially what you have is a uh, perineal that reconstructs itself or reconstitutes itself after a reasonable length and an anterior tibial that's gone and a posterior tibial that's gone proximally, but then starts to reconstitute in the mid vessel, as you can see on the right, as far as the posterior tibial. Further downstream, you'll see, if it plays, uh, you'll see uh, a more vessel that reconstitutes or not. Okay, you can take my word for it. So the first thing that you're going to want to deal with are wires, and I think this is a very important thing to understand when you're picking equipment, is just understanding the wire and understanding the performance characteristics, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, later. But, you know, you want something steerable, you need something that's stiff, you need something that's slick that can get across some of these lesions, and then sometimes you need uh, features in the tip in terms of shape retention, sometimes you need it to prolapse. Uh, there's a lot of different... Uh, qualities in these uh, wires that I think are important and understanding the core material is also important. A lot of wires now are nitinol and that's very helpful in terms of resistance to kinking and uh, you know for a lot of people now that do multiple vessels uh, it's nice to be able to, to take that same wire and use it in more than one vessel and I think this concept also shouldn't be lost on anyone when you go from an 014 system to 018 system you're, it's not one plus one equals two it's actually nearly three times stronger. And like I said, I think you'll find that the current variety of 018 wires is quite good. Uh, they're quite uh, responsive in terms of uh, tactile feedback, and they give you a lot of support and help you cross. And then finally, the taper of the wire. That's just fitting your wire to your lesion. Sometimes it's more important to be able to track, and sometimes it's more important to cross. And so choosing your tips and choosing your wires can be very important there. And a basic uh, algorithm is just, you know, I like to start with a workhorse wire. I mean, why make things hard on yourself? A lot of times your workhorse wire will work. So if it works, great. If it's not, choose another wire. If you know you're up against a very difficult lesion, then you're going to need a more uh, a sort of a higher penetration wire. Same thing. So pick one that you're very comfortable with, start with that, and then escalate as needed. So in terms of this person, you know, in treatment, you have probably PTA and atherectomy. I think, you know, once you've had a wound, I think you're probably a little bit beyond the supervised exercise program, but, uh, but all of this is important for, for peripheral disease. So again, the, the different options, 
So in this particular instance, I uh, chose a uh, rotational device to get through the perineal. And uh, you see on the left the before and on the right the after. And that's just immediately after just atherectomy. It's, uh, it's pre-PTA. In terms of PTA, I think there's also characteristics that are important, understanding how these balloons work in terms of their crossability, in terms of how they unfold and how they refold, and not being in a hurry. You know, these are areas where you want to take your time, do a very long, slow, methodical uh, inflation, because unfortunately, we don't have a lot of fantastic stuff below the knee in terms of length. You know, we don't have these long, we don't have the ability to put long DES at this point. We don't know if BVS is going to work. So, so because we're, we're using balloons, we need to know how to use them. And then a lot of time, again, when you're using coronary equipment, you find sometimes that a RX balloon gives you a little bit better uh, push. Sometimes over the wire is better. Um, and this is just another concept. So balloon, you know, you just want to be able to track it and, uh, and make sure it gets to where it needs to be. And then this is the final result of that case. In terms of just quickly looking at some of the other uh, tools in the toolbox, you know, PTA and uh, bare metal stenting has been kind of uh, uh, suboptimal. You look at coronary DES, it's much better. And again, BVS we don't know about, and then DCB, obviously we're all familiar with these trials that simply didn't uh, work out as well as we would have liked. So in closing, you know, uh, just my algorithm, I think it's got to be tailored, but again, keep in mind all of these different uh, pieces of equipment. If you're dealing with ISR, you're probably going to deal with a different sort of atherectomy device than a long calcified lesion, and then focal lesions, you can probably do whatever you want. Um, and uh, I think at this point, endo first, I think we all agree, is, uh, is probably the way to go. Uh, but there is a surgical option, and I think that shouldn't be lost on us as well.